this is the story. <laughs> Stories of people, of nations, of the world, of yesterday and today, and the meaning they hold for tomorrow. of the Air Transport Command, a story entitled Anywhere Unlimited. Anywhere Unlimited, that is the scope of the Air Transport Command. Anywhere unlimited, wherever there is sky, wherever the wide blue yonder extends, there you will find the men and the planes of the ATC. Anywhere unlimited, that's the tropics and the frozen north, that's the Atlantic and the Pacific, that's the whole world, brother, and the skies above it, that's anywhere unlimited. Here is air power undreamed of. Here is air power that staggers the imagination. Here is air power pointing the way to the transportation of tomorrow. Here is the might and strength and the vision to pave new highways in the heavens, new roadways in the skies, new markers in the clouds. Want to go somewhere, mister? Want to go anywhere, mister? Name it. Abaddon, Karachi, Port Moresby, Kunming, Delhi, Ketchikan. Name it, mister. The ATC's got a line running there. Name it, mister. Anywhere unlimited. That's a C-47, a transport plane of the ATC. That's a workhorse of the skies. And here are some of the facts behind its operation. This is the transportation system that flies more than 166,000 miles of route, spanning every ocean and touching every continent. This is the transportation system that flies 119,000 foreign route miles and circles the globe in five days flying time. Its planes edging into every fighting front, servicing American and allied fighting men the world over. This is the transportation system that flies hospital planes that brought back 32,000 sick and wounded during 1944. These are the planes that carried a total of 123,000 patients in foreign and domestic flights. You may move these men now. Yes, sir. This man, lower litter. This factory case, what is on? Yes, sir. All right, you men. Transfer the patients to the plane. Okay. All right. Come on. This is a flight strip somewhere in Europe. Ambulances have brought the sick and the wounded from the hospital to the airfield. With them is the flight surgeon in charge of the group, each patient having been carefully checked to make sure he's in condition to be flown. The surgeon turns the group over to the flight nurse, the medical corpsman who will assist her, and the pilot of the ATC plane, which will fly these men to the United States. The hospital ship takes off on its mission of mercy. Inside the plane, the wounded and the sick are made comfortable by the evacuation nurse and the medical corpsman. In the pilot's compartment, the pilot and co-pilot nurse the plane along, carefully, gingerly. This flight must be as smooth as possible. Just the right altitude must be maintained for the abdominal cases. And inside the plane... Know what I'm going to do when the plane sets down? Yeah. Be carried out. <laughs> that you don't have to be a mind reader to get. Okay. 
What are you going to do? Take a good, deep breath of good old American air. Yeah, I'm going to fill my lungs with U.S. ozone and say to them, breathe deep, kid. This is where they make it good and sweet and clean. <laughs> I'm going to see my ma. I know she'll be down to see me as soon as we get set. wonder if they let babies in. In where? In the hospital. How old a baby? Brand new one. Born the day I got hit. Uh, I'm afraid you'll have to settle for the missus. She'll probably bring you pictures, though. Yeah. Funny thing about pictures. What? Pictures are good only if you know the person. What do you mean? Well, if you know a person, a girl, say, and you have her picture, then you can look at that picture and imagine what the girl really looks like. But if you only have a picture, you can't really imagine the real thing. Hmm. With Hedy Lamar, I've had no trouble. I've never seen Hetty, but boy, can I imagine. <laughs> sure. Are you comfortable? Yes, good. Thanks. Thanks. What was the joke, or is it the kind of joke I'm not supposed to hear? Oh, you could hear it all right. But it's one of those tracks that are funny only for the moment. Don't feel badly. I'll come up with another one any minute. Be sure and call me. Say, Lieutenant, is it true that after we get settled, they'll move us to hospitals near our homes? Whenever possible. That's the plan. Then my folks can bring me home cooking. Home cooking, my favorite dream. Home cooking. Mom, the new baby. Everything a guy dreams of when he's a soldier. These are the sick and the wounded being brought home on the wings of air power. These are the casualties of battle flown to hospitals in the United States by the Air Transport Command. This is a vital function of air power. This is truly a heavenly mission of mercy. Today, ATC planes fly more than 2 million miles every 24 hours. That's equivalent to 80 times daily around the world at the equator. In 1944, they logged 600 million miles. Big numbers, mister. Big numbers in terms of miles. But what do these planes carry? What do they load? Yeah. No. You sure was good to get your last letter. I'm glad Aunt Minnie is better, and the part about Sister's Day sure made me laugh. Tell her not to grow up too fast. I'm planning on coming back soon. Here's today's letter to me. Today is every day I awaken thinking of you. And today is every day I send you a poem. It's by Elizabeth Barrett Brown. If thou must love me, let it be for naught except for love's sake only. Do not say I love her for her smile, her look, her way of speaking gently, for a trick of thought that falls in well with me. What do they carry? During 1944, three and one-half billion pieces of poop mail, three and one-half billion messages of cheer, of faith, and hope, and prayer. What do they carry, these planes and men of the Air Transport Command? Come on, get up! Get up! Get those nags going, will you? I'm trying, I'm trying. Now, come on, be good horses, will you? Oh, I'll see them, will you, buddy? They got me nuts. Get along, little doggies. Get along, get along. Get going, you pound sound critters. Join the Air Corps. Oh, Off we go into the wild blue oh. yonder. It's romantic. It's dramatic. Come yeah. on, cowboys. Cut the grousing and jockey these nags out of this plane. This may be a short war. <laughs> What do they carry? Among other things, in 1944, 580,000 tons of high-priority cargo, including horses, fully equipped troops, trucks, and airplane engines. The stuff to fight a war. The material with which to wage battles. The supplies necessary to win a victory. What do they carry? 
In an air transport command plane a few weeks ago. Wait. Wait one moment. Since at our destination point we will be in the midst of English-speaking people, uh, would it not be wise to engage in the speech of English while we are flying? Mon ami, you have, uh, what is it, uh, le grand idée. And fourth, let us all converse in the English, no? Very good. Very good. We shall have excellent practice. <laughs> And I am certainly that we could all do the practice. <laughs> what do they carry? They carry VIP. Very important person. Diplomatic passengers. Businessmen. Officials. In the instance of the San Francisco United Nations Conference on International Organizations, members of 24 of the 46 national delegations flew to this country as fair-paying passengers in regularly scheduled passenger aircraft of the AAF Air Transport Command. Delegations with their advisors and staffs of the following nations were transported in whole or in part by the ATC. Belgium, Brazil, China, Czechoslovakia, Egypt, Ethiopia, France, Greece, India, Iran, Iraq, Lebanon, Liberia, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, Norway, Philippine Commonwealth, Saudi Arabia, Syria, Turkey, the Union of East Africa, Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, United Kingdom, and Yugoslavia. Of these, the Chinese delegation moved the greatest distance along ATC routes, from China via India and North Africa to the United States. Small world, eh, brother? And it's going to get a lot smaller. A lot smaller. Says Lieutenant General Harold L. George, Commanding General of the Air Transport Command, Here is evidence that air transport, so remarkably developed by this war, can become the medium of mutual understanding for all nations, and peace comes. Distances between the world's capitals are measured now in hours. The leaders of nations can meet face to face and settle their differences by personal arbitration rather than by long-range negotiations. Yes, it's a small world, all right. This world of air power. Documentary evidence, please. ATC planes cross the Atlantic on an average of once every 19 minutes, 24 hours a day. A plane every 19 minutes. Better than some streetcar service, huh, citizen? And faster, too. ATC planes cross the Pacific on the average of every 51 minutes on a round-the-clock schedule. That's better than a plane leaving on the hour every hour. Operations, roughly, are 25% ferrying military aircraft and 75% transport service, with 11 United States airlines under military contract, contributing some 18% of overall foreign transport activity. All told, some two and one-half billion passenger miles and 858 million ton miles were flown in 1944. To fly great distances such as these, you must have men and machines, and more men to service those machines. Also, you must have accommodations for the men who fly the planes and for their passengers. The ATC has all of these. Bases to service aircraft, crews, cargo, and passengers along this far-flung global network operate efficiently on Pacific coral atolls, in sub-zero Alaska and Greenland, in African and Indian jungles, and on Sahara sands. These bases constitute the world's largest hotel chain, the De Gink system. A Hotel De Gink is Air Forces for anything from a jungle hut complete with that group to a luxury hotel with hot and cold running water and soap and towel. The De Gink system last year furnished quarters to about 5 million persons. These guests were fed 15 million meals and provided with 2 million in-flight lunches. Big business, brother, and how? To maintain its worldwide foreign exchange system for passengers and personnel, ATC deals in the currency of 36 different countries. Change your pound notes into dollars, mister? 
Tomorrow is a face in the misty light. So I say to her, I say. Wait to her. a minute. How can you say anything to her? Since when do you speak a rap? I don't. I make with the eyes. Like this. And she makes back to the eyes with me. Like this. And Wait a minute. I came in late. It sounds good. Uh, what did she say to you when she made with the eyes? She said, yes, of course. So I bought the Persian rug for my wife. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I'm sorry I asked. But since I got my neck out anyway, how bad are the accommodations here at this beginning? Man, are you kidding? Listen, when you want anything around here, you don't even need to ask. You just clap your hands. Really? It's a cinch. You mean, if I want service, I just do like this? You got it, mister. Well? Well, what? Oh, after you do that, you wait a minute or two. I'm waiting. Then what happens? Nothing. You've had your fun, window wishing, so you go right ahead and do it yourself. Hadn't you heard? There's a war on. <laughs> To run an aerial network to anywhere unlimited, you must think of many things. You must establish a thousand and one activities, improve these activities, and see that they work. List of activities established and being improved, please. Air Sea Rescue Organization with its search planes, boats, parachuting medics and sled dogs, medical service, communication and weather stations, local food production with gardens and livestock raising projects, revenue service for certified passengers, customs, censorship, immigration, and baggage hauling. Look to the sky, citizen. That's an Air Transport Command plane on its way to anywhere unlimited. That's supplies and communications and medicine and machine parts. That's armed troops and VIPs and diplomats with their locked pouches. That's a little of everything necessary to maintain civilization on the ground. Put up into the sky and flown to remote places to carry to them American civilization. That's the mightiest airline in the world. On one of the most important missions of the war... Promising things to be had in the future. Promising peacetime air power and the benefits thereof to America and to the world. That's across the Atlantic and across the Pacific, across the Himalayas, across the hump into China. That's anywhere unlimited. That's right, brother. Show us what's to be taken, or where to take it, and we'll get it there. Men, material, planes, any kind of plane. If they got wings and a stick, we'll fly them and deliver them. That's our business. I'm one of the pilots in the ferrying division of the ATC. We're the gents who fly military aircraft from the factory to their final destination, domestic and foreign. We try to live up to our motto for delivering the planes. Intact, on time... Ready for action. Army 371 to control tower. Request clearance for takeoff. Over. Control to Army 371. You're cleared for takeoff. Well, there you go, Bob. <laughs> What's breaking you up? A uh, private joke. Yeah? Like what? I was just thinking over the last couple of months. East, west, north, south, so what? I was just thinking we might establish a route to Mars. <laughs> Kill my wife. Call her up and say, Hey, Ma, just got back from Mars. To the more than 200,000 officers, enlisted men and women, and civilian employees who make up the ATC, to the intrepid airmen and the courageous ground crews, to everyone who has a hand in this gigantic undertaking of air power, we raise our hands in salute. 
And appropriately, we sound out the words and music of the official Air Transport Command song, Born to the Sky. There are men born to the sea who will fight for the navy blue. There are men born to the land and to the army too. But to us, born to the sky, there's a love you'll understand Where each gallant crew bows to fly him through In the air transport command Anywhere unlimited, through uncharted skies, through untracked heavens such is the destination of the planes and men of the Air Transport Command. Such its mission. Such its promise for the future. For the air power of today, harnessed to fight the war and win the victory, will be reharnessed after the war to maintain the peace, to bring man closer to his fellow man, to distribute the goods of the earth throughout the earth, to continue to blaze trails through the skies for a smaller and a better world. There are men, born to the sea, who will fight for the navy blue. There are men, born to the land, and to the army too. But to us, born to the sky, there's a love you'll understand, where each gallant crew bows to fly and blue. In the air, You've been listening to This is the Story, one of a series of radio dramas selected and rebroadcast for the men and women of the American Armed Forces in every overseas theater of operation. Stories of the free people, of the free nations of the world. This is the Armed Forces Radio Service.